everyone, so I'm John, I'm a third year medical student at uh, Fitz University, I'm from Somerset West in the Western Cape, and uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a graduate student who got into Fitz from a honours in medical physiology uh, with a BSc in human life sciences before it, and uh, Sadhu has just asked me to give a little bit about my story and the journey that I took in, uh, in getting here, as well as a little bit of info on the web, so I'm going to get to that. So uh, for a very long time, it's, it's kind of been my dream to be a medical doctor. I've um, been obviously trying for, for quite a few years now. It's, it's taken five years and uh, 17 rejections to get me here, um, but all worth it, definitely. Um, but yeah, so for a very long time, it's been my dream to be a medical doctor. And to be honest, firstly, in, in matric, I, I definitely didn't take that dream seriously. Um, I had a lot of things going on at the time, and I should have definitely prioritized academics more, especially seeing as med school requires you to have such good marks. Um, but uh, I managed to finish matric with uh, four level seven distinctions and uh, the rest were level six. Um, I had applied for medicine at Fitz University, Stellenbosch, uh, Tux, University of Free State and UCT, um, all of whom rejected me in the first year. Um, which was uh, very disappointing, but uh, thankfully they had accepted me for my second degree choices, which at the time were a BSc at Stellenbosch and a mechatronic engineering slash mechanical engineering at the rest. So I decided to go with the BSc because I thought, hey, it'll give me the best chance slash uh, maybe a foot in the door in medicine. Um, and uh, to be honest, the same kind of thing happened. It was a clash of priorities in my first year. I definitely embraced the student life way too much. Um, and lost sight of the goal, so I ended up my first year with um, around 70%, probably less than actually. Um, and it was only really in my second year of BSc that I had kind of began, or I had first heard about the Graduate Entry Medical Program at Vitz, which I'm sure many of you know by now is just this awesome little program that they have at Vitz, which allows graduates or people with bachelor degrees or more um, to hop straight into third year. Um, and it's, it's, it's honestly fantastic, but you've got to write this FITS additional placement test in October, which can be very stressful. Um, so the penny had kind of dropped then when I found out in second year, um, in the second semester thereabouts. Um, it was already too late for me to save the first half of my degree, but core, I was going to give it my all in the second half. Um, and I did, and I managed to finish my third year with um, an average of about 83%. And that brought my average for the degree up to about 78, 79%. Um, unfortunately, it still wasn't good enough to get into VITS, but that was the year that I applied. And I wrote the VITS additional placement test in the October of that year, so that was 2018. And I managed to pass the test, and I'll, I'll talk more about that and, and, and how I went, how I studied, and how the test was um, in a bit. But... Uh, I didn't get through to the second round. I didn't make the cut for the GEMP1 intake of 2018 uh, or 2019 at the time, um, but I wrote it in 2018. Uh, so I was, honestly, I was, I was very distraught, very upset. Um, I had worked so hard to improve my marks and, and yeah, I mean, just generally very down at the moment uh, or at that time uh, because, you know, I'm sure you guys know it. Um, especially after weathering so many rejections for this dream um, for so long that it can really, it can weigh on your consciousness, it can weather you down. Um, but thankfully I had a very good friend and support group with my family as well that, that just got me out of that sink and, and to keep going. Thankfully as well I had uh, applied for backup um, choices in postgrads, so I applied for an honours at UCT and Stelis um, in physiology, medical physiology and anatomy ended up going for medical physiology in Tigerberg. Um, fantastic year, I really, really enjoyed it. And you know, it was also to see whether or not research was something that I could see myself doing in the long term. And while I enjoyed it very much, it kind of also cemented for me that, hey, this might not be something that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life doing. Um, and getting a bit more clinical exposure and being on Tigerberg Medical Campus as well also just told me, hey, maybe, well, actually, medicine is what I want to do. It's always been. Um, so I'll tell you about my why soon as well. Uh, but I ended up getting 85% at the end of my honours. I uh, worked very hard that year. Um, my focus was on cardiovascular research. Very rewarding, very interesting. 
Um, and so together with my last two years of, of, um, of BSc and, and my honours, I had an average of around 83%. Um, and thankfully, because I had passed the WEP the year before, you don't have to write it um, for, I think, two years after. Um, you have to fact check me on that, but uh, I wasn't, or I didn't have to write it again in 2019. And thankfully, finally cracked the nod in November, and it was just a huge pressure to release, you know, because you've got all of this competition between you and your peers leading up to it. Um, but now it's a different kind of pressure because I, whereas I was trying to do well for getting into medical school, now that I'm here, I owe it to everyone who, who didn't make it and to be the best doctor that I can be, you know, finally living the dream. Um, so giving it my all because of that. The uh, VITS additional placement test, or the WAPT, which is what you have probably come here for. Um, it's a behemoth of a test. It encompasses physiology, molecular medicine, and anatomy. And honestly, it can just be a lot of pressure at the time, just uh, in leading up to it. It is a lot of work to get through. Um, so my suggestion would be to structure it very well in your studying. Uh, when I was preparing for the WAPT at the time, uh, I had a lot of other things going on for my BSc, uh, which no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing a postgrad, um, that takes precedence, definitely. Um, you've, you've got to do well, because that'll do more for your application than just simply passing the WAPT, which is basically a binary, you pass or you fail kind of test. Uh, so in my preparation for it, um, I decided to take the study smart as opposed to study hard method. And I pulled together a few friends and we took the course objectives, which you can find on the website online for the WAPT. And we went ahead and we answered them. We worked through it probably about two months before the test. Uh, we probably started working on it about half a month or a month after we had found out we were invited to write the WAPT. And that was basically just leading up so we could have like a summary to go through and cram through in the last week. Because I know myself and unfortunately I am not someone who has a lot of motivation to study for a test months in advance. I'm definitely in the cramming category, unfortunately, always have been uh, better in a short period of time under lots of pressure. And it, it can seem like a lot of pressure at the time, so the summary seemed the way to go at the time. Um, and I believe that there is actually one that's supplied by, I think, Amped for WAPT at this current juncture. But at the time, we didn't really have it, or I couldn't find it, didn't have access to it, so we made our own. And that really helped. Um, in the week before I got to, uh, the week before the, the WAPT, I flew up to Joburg uh, from Stelis and uh, or Cape Town. And thankfully, I had friends who could put me up for about a week and feed me uh, while I stressfully crammed my way through all the work. Um, my strategy was simple. I was going to read through my summaries twice over in full. And while I went through them, I had a exam pad on the side where I would just jot down the things that I needed to work on, the gaps, and what I knew I might need to actually just have another look and or in the case of anatomy, memorize. Uh, and that really helped. And I left the last day or two um, just for going through the example questions slash a past paper kind of deal if I could find it on, online. And that definitely, definitely helps because I'm sure one or two, there were a few instances in the papers where it came up. Actually going and writing the WAP, the day of the WAP came and boy, a lot of people there. Um, I think there were about 800 of us at the time. And these are people who had been invited and selected. So, you know, it's, it's quite a competent crowd. And it just honestly, it's, it was fantastic to, to be a part of that. It was the first time I'd ever gotten so far with an application. And uh, go in there and there, there's a lot of pressure. You, you're, given, you're given quite a few hours to, to get through the exams. I think they divide them into three papers, uh, the physiology, molecular medicine and anatomy. Um, for our year, the anatomy seemed to be the easier of three, which was a surprise. I thought it would have been more hectic, but I believe that the 2019 paper, the anatomy was a bit harder, so definitely don't underestimate it. Um, it was just a, a surprise for me at the time. But you definitely have enough time to get through all of the questions. And uh, yeah, um, I, I, I felt a bit so-so after the test, to be honest, but but uh, thankfully got the, cracked the nod for the invite, or like that I passed uh, about a month later. So I've also been asked to maybe give a little bit of advice for future Gimpers. So if I was to give any advice, um, just 
give yourself enough time to prepare. Um, your mental health, your physical health, definitely take precedence. And odds are you've already got a lot of on your plate already. If you're doing a BSc or if maybe you're working, um, don't burn the candle at two ends. Prepare adequately. Work smart as opposed to hard. Um, and just give yourself enough time. Also, if, if you happen to fail the WAPT the first time, don't worry and please try again. Please apply again. Um, so many people give up and sometimes, honestly, you, you have a better chance the next year anyway. Uh, if, if you're like me in my case where I did pass the test but I didn't get enrolled, a postgrad honestly helps so much. Um, doing my honours, it actually it actually gives you an extra point on the composite score index. So when we actually went in, in and wrote the web the first time, before we even did the exam, they gave us this screening sheet. On there, it, it contains information such as, are you the first degree holder in your family? Or are you from a rural area? Are you published? Are you the first author in a publication? Or maybe is your name on a publication out there? And do you have a postgrad? So it's an extra point. It may give you the extra push if you don't get enough your BSc or your bachelor's. Um, so please, please keep trying. Um, you will get through it and you'll, you'll, your dream will come true eventually, just like me. Um, and also, you know, the pressure is immense at the moment. You've got a lot of competition going around and it's just so important to keep yourself motivated and remember your why. Um, for me, the journey kind of like all started when I was quite young, actually, and my family was living in Zambia at the time, and my father had to do had to have a minor operation um, in Zambia on his nose because he had a, a carcinoma, and the plastic surgeon came out uh, while we were in the waiting room and just started talking to us, and this is a guy who makes his bread and butter off of facelifts and tummy tucks and breast implants but his real specialty was in cleft palate surgery and he would take three months of the year just to go out and uh, he was part of the the smile foundation and go and do cleft palate surgery for free and he told us the story of of, a, of an old man post 70 who had arrived a month before and this was a guy who he had done surgery on about a year prior and he made the trip from Mozambique all the way to his practice in Zambia just to thank him for giving him the chance to smile for the first time in his life. And something like that, just thinking about it, still gives me, still gives me goosebumps. And, uh, you know, just to be able to one day be that person for someone is enough motivation enough for me. And I'm sure you all have your whys, so hold on to them for dear life. Um, it's, a, it's a hard road, and, but it's, it's, it'll definitely be worth it in the end. Um, currently, GEMP has, has honestly been a dream. <laughs> Coronavirus uh, hasn't uh, been ideal for my first uh, year or third year, I guess, kind of. <laughs> GEMP one. First year of medicine. <laughs> but uh, it, 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 yeah, so it's definitely thrown a spanner in the works, but it's, it's all very interesting, all very rewarding. A lot of hard work, a lot of pressure now to do well for yourself in the future to be a, the best doctor you can be. But... Follow your dreams, it'll all be worth it. Um, keep pushing, push through the pressure, um, and work work smart as opposed to hard. You'll get through it. Thanks. Our greatest glory is never in falling, but in rising every time we fall. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like these. Thank you to the new subscribers, very much appreciated. 